Welcome back. In section 2.4, we'll be talking about metrics representation of a linear transformation on general vector spaces. So in the previous section, we look at uh, linear transformation from Rn to Rm, and we saw how these corresponding to matrix transformation and how helpful that correspondence was to prove something was invertible, to find composition, to figure out what the geometric description was, and so on. And so our goal here is to get something similar for a general transformation. So use matrices to study linear transformation, T from V to W, between finite dimensional vector spaces. All right, that's going to require some work because um, we can't really multiply polynomials with matrices. It doesn't make any sense. And so we'll need to somehow transform polynomials into vectors first and then multiply them by matrices. So let's see. In section 2.4.1, we'll be looking at the coordinate isomorphism. All right, so this is going back to section 1.5.6, where we had coordinate vectors and stuff like that. So let's recall all of this. Let V be a, fine, a vector space of dimension N, and let's say I have a basis V1 through Vn for V. In section 1.5.6, I had it. <laughs> I wasn't sure. All right, we use B to relate V and Rn. But at that time, we didn't really have the vocabulary or the knowledge to actually name what that relationship was. Now we do. All right, so for any element V of V, the coordinate vector V relative to B, so we note it like that, VB equals A1, A2, An, where um, v is a1, v1, plus a2, v2, plus a n, v n. So we know that because we have a basis, these coefficients are unique, and we call them coordinates, and we place them in a vector, and that determines v completely. All right, the coordinate map, psi b, is the function from V to Rn, that maps a vector V to its coordinate vector. Um, I remember students didn't like this notation in the past, so I saw a new one while looking in books. And so if you want, we could use C of V coordinate. C, that's nice. And it's not a gr fancy Greek letter, so. And we also define the map. Psi of B from Rn to V, that sends A1, A2, An to A1, V1 plus A2, V2 plus An, Vn. All right, so CB for this one, and I like LB for linear combination because it's really just giving you the coefficient to build the linear combination. So this is a linear combination map. All right, so we will also use CB for the coordinate maps and LB for the inverse. Uh, this is phi. Let me just write this. This is phi, and this is psi. All right. So here's the theorem that's going to get this entire section going. Let V be an n-dimensional vector space. Let B be a basis for V. The coordinate maps, CB from V to Rn, is an isomorphism. With inverse LB or phi of B. All right, so that means that V is isomorphic to Rn. So any vector, any vector that has dimension n is isomorphic to Rn. So there are no drastically different structure here. If you know the dimension, you have an idea of the structure. Of course, the identification depends on a choice of a basis. So it's not natural if I start with a random vector space, it's not going to be naturally isomorphic to Rn. I just need to choose a basis. Once I have a basis, there's an isomorphism there for me. All right, so you will prove that, lucky you, in an assignment or a worksheet. We've done most of the work already, so you'll see it won't be too bad.